Force Light Infinite is a fast-paced ARPG created for mobile devices. You've probably heard of this game, or at least its name, in some shape or form throughout the years. While it was made for mobile, they did try to reach out to PC users as well, but it just doesn't feel as seamless or intuitive as prior iterations, or anything like Path of Exiles or any other generic ARPG. That doesn't mean that it isn't good, it offers the itch for non-stop farming and endless loot. I personally never did give this game a chance since Torchlight 2, so let's change that now. I could have definitely done without the microtransactions that were constantly forced down my throat. I understand it's a new developer who made a move to mobile players, and it works great. However, they decided to approach things completely differently from the original concept. I was really rather disappointed to see so many of the characters with extremely good builds are either pay to win or strongly restricted to new players, unless they are playing the game for a very long time and getting the standard currency to unlock them. You can still play the game without these, but it feels very underhanded. The story itself and the cutscenes are not really that great. It's not fun, and you really want to leave your allies hanging, especially Arya, who is incredibly aggravating to listen to and just be around, especially with the way that she behaves and her body being formed so disproportionately. The music and visual aspect may appear a little bit cartoonish at times, but it makes the game feel and sound more arcade-like, which is a nice touch, but I don't see any reason to take these games seriously in terms of gameplay or overall purpose, other than to run out, kill monsters, kill bosses, get loot, and search for a higher and higher min-max output. Because it is an ARPG, you'll be more focused on the mindless turn your brain off functionality in which you put on some extremely flashy looking skills and supports and watch monsters get annihilated and the screen light up. It achieves this extremely well from the very beginning of the game if you know what to look for in terms of build customization. When compared to other ARPGs like Diablo 4 or Path of Exiles, they pale in comparison to how rapidly this game provides you a lot of access to power and how quickly leveling from level 1 to level 60 takes. You do have a lot of freedom to create and link your favorite talents without worrying about weapons or slots or links or anything else, as long as you have the proper skill and level to acquire them. The game is a baby's entry into the ARPG genre. In my opinion, it's not as complicated as Path of Exile's talent tree, but it's also not as bewildering. Within the first few hours of playing, you'll learn how it works. This is wonderful because games like this are simple to learn and do not require you to play over 2,000 hours to master. The new quality of life modifications that have been made to the crafting system, skills, maps, and other areas are a lot more polished, with a new mechanism that allows you to piece together the map of the city of Aetherna in search of knowledge and riches. From a player's standpoint, this is a significant step in the right direction. While the MTX is included in this version, it also indicates that the developers are still hard at work trying to construct and mold the game of the player base's desires. As somebody with over 3,000 hours of Path of Exile experience, I can say that this is a fun element that they've implemented this season, but one huge hurdle for me is the emphasis on it being a mobile game, which I believe limits its capacity to shine fully as a PC game. I like it when it's not being janky with mobility skills and certain powers, but it's definitely not a bad game, and I do feel bad for not giving it a try sooner because it does provide a lot of mindless entertainment.